Hello everybody, welcome back to another Age of Sigma Warcry video, where today I'm going to tell you a little story. Imagine you're young Timmy, you walk into a games workshop, and you look at all of the fantastical Age of Sigma miniatures, and you say, ah, I want to play this game. But then you find out exactly what that means to play the game. It means buying hundreds of miniatures, spending hours painting them, taking so much time and effort and money and pouring that into the game, and that kind of puts you off. So you say, okay, what have you got for me that's a little bit smaller scale, something a little easier to get into? And he points towards a box on the shelf and he says, this is what you want to play. You want to play Warcry. And you say, okay, what do I need to buy to play Warcry? And he hands you this box, the Crypt of Blood. And you say to the man, great, here, take my money. And then you go home and then you start in your journey of Warcry. Now, that's how people want it to go, but the real question is, is that box that you're thinking about buying or that you have bought actually worth it in the first place? So today, we're gonna to go through that box, Crypt of Blood. We're gonna take a look to see at the contents. We're going to see if it's worth the money. And ultimately, if it is to you, we're gonna look at the different factions. We're going to do some very basic building for those factions, how you would want to expand them out in your games, and hopefully see if Crypt of Blood ultimately is a purchase that you want to make. So the first question is, what is Crypt of Blood? Crypt of Blood is going to be the new Warcry starter set. It contains two Warhammer Underworlds Warbands. So we're talking about Zandai's True Seekers and the Crimson Court. It contains a 72 page Crypt of Blood start here book. And that book contains all of the core rules that you'll need for Warcry, as well as a number of bespoke missions designed specifically for Crypt of Blood in order to take into account that you're not going to be playing full 1000 point games and you're going to be using far smaller Warbands. It also comes with fighter and ability cards for both of your Warbands. 18 dice, a Warcry token board with all of the tokens that you'll need to play, a range ruler, double-sided paper gaming board for you to play on, and also six new pieces of terrain that we can see here. So the question is then, what is this box actually worth? At the time of me writing this, we don't have the pricing of Crypt of Blood. They said at Warhammer Fest that it would be in the range of 60 to 70 pounds, so I'm betting 65 pounds. However, for a starter set like this, I'd probably be looking at something like the 40 pound mark to be a very good value. But if we kind of break down what's in the box, We've got the six pieces of terrain themselves, where if you were to buy them separately from Games Workshop at full retail price, they would be packaging it in the region of 50 pounds. And then you've got the two warbands, which is in the region of 26 pounds a piece. So if you take everything together, including the books, the terrain, the dice, all the markers, all the tokens, everything, you're looking at around about 110 to 120 pounds worth of product. It is worth noting that both Zandai's Truth Seekers and the Crimson Court are now out of production. So you won't be able to buy them at Games Workshop stores separately anymore, but they still might be available at third party sites. So the question that you have to ask yourself then is, is it a product for you? Now, I understand fully where Games Workshop is going with this product. Up until now, aside from the original Heart of Gur starter set, you weren't really able to walk into a Games Workshop and say, I want to play Warcry. What box can I get that allows me and my friend to have a self-contained experience where we can just play our games and everything's in there, everything's in the box that we might need. We don't need to buy extra dice, we don't need to buy extra tokens, whatever. And this is really what that box is for. So I think if you are a completely brand new player to the game and you want to split it with one of your friends, maybe pay 30 pounds or so to kind of get into the rules and to see how it plays, I think this is something that might be for you. Also, if you like the aesthetics of either of the two warbands, if you really dig the vampires or you like Kalthia Zandaya with her warband and her bird and her couple of guys, that's also a good reason to pick this box up because you won't be able to get them otherwise elsewhere. Similarly, if you play Warcry already and you really want one of these two or maybe both of these two Underworlds warbands to add to your collection that you can't otherwise get elsewhere, it would probably be a good idea to pick up this box as there are there's no indications from Games Workshop that they're going to be releasing these two warbands separately. If you really love that graveyard scenery 
and you want a self-contained Warcry experience, I think this is something that might be for you. There have been a lot of people who have been saying, oh no, it's not worth it. Why would you buy this when you can do this, you can do that, you can buy other things. Now, there are cheaper entry points into Warcry. If you already know exactly what you want to play, or you're an existing player, maybe you've got an Age of Sigmar army and you want to play that way. So if you already know what you want, then no, there's no real reason for you to buy this box. Again, unless you really love that graveyard terrain. For me personally, I've said already that I do understand why Games Workshop are putting this out. I think the price point is actually quite key to this. At a £65 price point, it puts it very similar to the Age of Sigmar and to the Warhammer 40k starter sets. Warhammer Underworlds has recently got a brand new starter set at £40, which is why if it's closer to that, then I would say it's a much better deal. That being said, if you look at third-party stores, usually they give up to around about 20% off of Games Workshop product. So if we're looking at a £65 and you do buy it from a third party, you could probably pick this box up for £50 or so and be fairly happy with what you get. Now, assuming that this is a box that you want to get into, or maybe it's something that you bought already, let's go through the warbands. Let's take a look at them to see how they do, how you can build them, how they play. So first up, you get Zandaya's Truth Seekers. This warband is led by Kalthia Zandaya. She has two of her accomplices with her, one with the bow, one with the hammer, and she's got her Aether Wing, which will go out and do scouting. Now, Kalthia Zandaya and her Truth Seekers themselves, it consists of four fighters in the warband. You've got Zandaya herself, Doraz Giantfell, Luxia Stormrider, and Taros the Bird. So we can see to begin with, they're all Stormcast Eternals. They are the chosen warriors of the God King Sigmar. Great heroes of legend that have been reforged into new bodies, given the finest armor, the finest weapons, and they're really designed to take the fight to the forces of chaos and anything that would seek to threaten Sigmar's realms. They have a number of abilities here. Now the way that Warcry works, it works in a rune mark system. So that means if you look at the fighter cards, each fighter has a number of different rune marks, and those rune marks will tell you what abilities that fighter is able to use. Their warband has access to a number of action cheating abilities. So we have Taros the Bird, who can make extra attacks. We have Kalthia Zandaya, who can give extra moves and extra attacks to her teammates. And then we have a number of buff abilities. Grading Lightning, for example, after Luxa has shot someone, you can then add more attacks to anyone else who attacks that person or Quick Volley, which allows Luxa to increase the amount of attacks that she does with her bow. In total, this warband comes up to 660 points. Your normal games of Warcry are played at 1,000 points. So we would be looking to, if you wanted to take this warband forward and to build out more Stormcast Eternals, we'd be looking to make additional purchases to bring that up to 1,000 points. But overall, as the core of a warband, I think Kalthia is very good. But the rest of her warband, I think personally, are slightly overcosted. So if we were going to build out this warband into something slightly bigger, that's where we'd look to start and that's where we'd look to improve. Going on to the Crimson Court, it's led by Prince Duval and his three associates. This is really where the story of Crypt of Blood comes in. Kalthia Zandaya and her party has heard of Prince Duval, this evil vampire who's been going around terrorizing the local townsfolk, abducting all the livestock, you know, drinking them dry, that kind of thing. All really classic vampire tropes here. And they've been sent by Sigmar to go and stop him. And they found the crypt where Prince Duval lies. And they're going to try and kill him. And it's up to Duval to defend himself and to kill off all those who would seek to come in and stop his reign of terror. The Crimson Court themselves consists of Prince Duval, Gorath the Enforcer, Valas von Fane, and Ennius Cursedborn. Now, the total points cost of this warband is 575. So you will notice that the Stormcast Eternal Warband is much more expensive. So maybe from a balance standpoint, you might want to think about leaving the bird at home. But again, the missions themselves are balanced towards these specific warbands and this size of battle. So try the game out of the box first. And if you feel like you're having fun with it, and if you feel like things are balanced for you, then carry on that way. Again, these fighters have access to a number of different abilities that they can use, as opposed to the Stormcast Eternals. The vampires have a lot of buffs. So they've got Fiendish Lure, for example, which adds damage when you critical hit. 
They have Thrill of the Hunt, which adds two to your attacks and strength if you're attacking. Call of the Crimson Feast, which is a big AoE bubble attack boost for your friendly fighters. And of course, the classic vampire ability, Thirst for Blood, where if they kill their enemies, they get to heal up. I think overall, the Stormcast Eternals are slightly more tanky, so they are more on the durable side. The Crimson Court are more on the damaging side, with fighters like Gorath the Enforcer with his very big 3-6 damage profile, and Prince Duval himself with his 2-6, but with 4 attacks. So I think you'll get an interesting balance between the two warbands. If you wanted to expand out your collection, Let's say you bought this box and you want to carry on playing Warcry and you want to build out these warbands into something that you can bring in Thousand Point games. I thought, okay, what kind of boxes could you buy to build these out? I think for the Crimson Court, it would be a nice idea to be able to take advantage of the Warhammer Underworld starter box. Maybe that's something that you play already or that's something that you have access to. There's a full warband in there. The starter box itself is only £40. So if you were to split that with a friend, you're talking about £20. And for that, you get access to the Sepulchral Stalkers. Now, the Sepulchral Stalkers consist of the Prince of Dust, the Champion, the Harvester, and a number of Petitioners. Nicely, the Petitioners themselves have the Minion Rune Mark, which means that your Vampires will be able to bring them back to life. That's one of the abilities that they have as undead champions, which is very nice for them. It is worth noting that the abilities that you're going to get on the cards in the box are not the full list of abilities that those fighters have access to. So one of the next things for you to do if you have this box is to go onto Warhammer Community and to download your faction PDFs. That'll have the full range of abilities for all of your fighters and all of your champions. If you didn't want to get the Warhammer Underworld's box, I think something very simple, just a single box of skeletons or a single box of Graveguard, they would both work very well to enhance the power of the Crimson Court, give them way more numbers on the battlefield, use the Crimson Court to do your killing for you, and then use your skeletons and your Graveguard to gum up the board to distract enemy fighters and to kind of keep them at arm's length. Going into Zandai's Truth Seekers, if you wanted to expand that out. They are all Stormcast, like I said, so they're going to be expensive just by the nature of the Warband. I think either a single box of Annihilators, the Annihilators we can see here with the Hammers and the Shields would be quite strong. There are several tournament lists out there at the moment which uses Annihilators along with Kalthia Zandai to get that extra movement off and to get those attacks off because they are really damaging pieces in the game, but they're not exactly all that fast. So if you can boost their attacks and boost their speed, then they can get where they need to go and they can kill what they need to kill as and when they need to. Alternatively, we would probably be looking at Vindictors. Vindictors are your Stormcast with the spears and the shields. They give a lot of very good range to the Warband, and they're just all around efficient fighters, which you generally would want to run if you're running a Stormcast Warband anyway. Right, and that's it from me for today. Thank you very much for watching. That's my rundown of the Crypt of Blood. I hope that it's helped you make a slightly more informed decision into your purchase. And if you have it already, a small insight in how to play the Warband and how to expand it out. If you are a new player for this, if you check out other videos on my channel, I've done a lot of tactics videos. I've done a lot of tournament rundowns for different events that I've been to. So I'm sure that somewhere in there, there's going to be a very good resource for you to learn more about the game and to continue on with your Warcry journey. As always, if you like what you see, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, let me know. Let me know what you think about Crypt of Blood. If you think it's a good deal or it isn't a good deal, what you think about Games Workshop's plan to release this, at different price points that it might be. And if you have the box, how you plan to expand on your warbands. But anyway, that's it. That's it from me for today. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.